Hi and welcome to another episode on Land Rover Drive. I'm Simon and this is my discovery. So it's Monday today and on Friday I'm going on a trip, a weekend trip with uh, Perry and Hans Erik. Before that trip I need to do some preparation and this is what this video is going to be about. Pre-trip preparation and also I'm installing a CB radio for the first time. Okay, so new radio. I actually bought this radio back in the day when I had the Defender because yeah, the trucker type radio looks really, really cool. Uh, but I figured this is not gonna fit for the Discovery. So uh, I bought a new one. So this is the new one, it's a CRT mic. And the main difference is that this one has a microphone that you operate uh, the whole uh, unit from. And also this means I can mount this wherever I want in the car and just need to use a network cable from this and uh, forward to, to where I want to uh, mount the, the radio. So uh, yeah, hidden and uh, really nice, 40 channel. And also I read a review, well I saw a review on, on YouTube about this and this comes out of the factory pretty well tuned. So what it says in the specs is pretty close to what uh, what you get. So uh, that's why I chose this one. In the box you get the handset with uh, all the controls. So nothing is on the main unit. This has a RJ45 plug, which is basically a network cable plug. You have the main unit, which has nothing. You just have the network cable input and, or output. And then you have the antenna input and the power input. There's also, I think, external microphone, I guess. So this is the, the main unit. So it's small and it's quite up to the task. So uh, hopefully it's gonna be a great choice. Okay, so CB radio, it's, uh, it's really fun to have a radio in the cars when we go driving. It's so much more social uh, during the drives and we often drive for, for a while. So um, yeah, as we saw on the, the last, um, or on the overlanding in Norway, um, where we went to Tronfjelle and, and uh, Femun and then Rødås, so you can see that me and Perry are talking quite a bit and uh, it makes the drive so much fun. So hopefully in the end everyone gets a CB radio and uh, so everyone can be online and just be, yeah, social all the way. It's a really fun road this one. Yeah, I remember last year when we drove it, it was, uh, I was hooked after that. <laughs> it's a good road. Uh, before I start uh, mounting the CB radio, I need to figure out where I'm going to mount it. And I think it's going to be behind here. also need to find a power source, which is in here, so I'm going to check that out. Uh, I need to remove this. But before I start doing that, I'm also going to uh, charge the main battery in the car and also going to take um, to get the auxiliary battery, which I, which I haven't used uh, yet. Uh, and put that on charge as well because I want to use that also on this trip. So let's get charging. Charging. <laughs> so I always do this before I go on a trip. I uh, charge the main battery battery in the car. So I think this battery is pretty getting pretty old. I need to check it, but I think maybe six years, five, five years, and uh, I replace it when I replace the. Uh, the alternator. So the alternator went, as you saw, on, if you look at the seven years of ownership video, we can see one of two times it hasn't been drivable is when uh, the alternator uh, went. So this is getting a bit old. It's, uh, it's not too old and it's still working well, but I, I always like to charge it a bit extra before I go on any trip. So if you're watching this from the UK and you're wondering what, what, what are my main battery doing on that side? Yeah, it's a left-hand side drive car, so that's left-hand side. So the extra, the extra space 
for a secondary battery is over here. So I'm not going to put my auxiliary battery here. I'm going to put an extra battery here later, but my auxiliary battery is going to be in the rear and just uh, be as a living battery. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Okay. Next up, put the auxiliary battery on. No, put uh, your auxiliary battery on uh, on charge. So uh, let's get that. Okay, so this is my auxiliary battery. I have a video about it a bit, I think. Yeah, just a short one. Let's see. As you can see, lifting battery, that's why I can actually lift it. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the battery, uh, it's a 100 amp hours uh, lifting battery. Uh, and also it got, a, a, what's it called? BMS, battery management system. So I can, with the Bluetooth, so I can use uh, my app on my phone to check the status and charging and everything. So, and also it's, uh, it has heat. Uh, so it basically has, has some uh, heat foil between the cells, which means I can use this when it gets cold or, or charge it when it gets cold. So it will um, warm up the battery before it starts charging. Uh, you cannot charge lithium battery uh, when it's cold, so yeah, if you're going to go camping in the cold, this is what you should get. And if you need a battery, just uh, uh, talk to me and I actually can supply batteries from now on. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see, charger. Okay, charger, Victron Energy Charger, do, do, do. and it's up. It's a big one actually, so And you may be thinking why do you want such a big charger? Well, uh, this is one that charges the quickest that I could find from my supplier and this charger is going to stay at home Okay, so uh, my first basic setup is going to be the battery a uh, home charger and a DC distribution board or something um, uh, so if it's just fuses and connections, I don't know, but uh, I will see. I hope to get the Egon DC hub. Hopefully they can sponsor me, please. Uh, but uh, if not, I'm gonna see if I'm just get a, a small one in, in the beginning. But uh, yeah, so battery, charger, and just distribution. This way uh, I can charge at home and also, it's gonna last for a weekend trip. I hope it's gonna last for like two or three days for the camping that, uh, that we do, because we drive a lot. So I think I'm gonna run the, the fridge on the, on the car when driving and then put it back on the auxiliary battery when I'm, I'm stationary. So that's stage one. Uh, stage two is gonna be adding solar, but that also is not gonna be mounted. It's gonna be free. Free. So, so basically stage one is going to be battery, charger, and then distribution. That's it. Stage one. And this is, I think it's the simplest way you can get started with the auxiliary battery. Don't have to drill holes in anything and uh, yeah, simple, simple, simple. Okay, so got the battery up uh, and running and on the app. So you can see how much is on it. Health check, voltage, capacity is probably when it is full. Start a standby. Now we can put it on charge and see what's what happened. Okay, so ready to start charging. Uh, there are, basically, there are two apps. If you want to check uh, the charger, you can also set the charger to different voltages. Um, uh, the normal mode for charging a lithium battery, which is 14.4 volts, not over. So basically between 14.2 and 14.4 volts is where we want to be when you're charging. And uh, when it's charged up, you don't want to be at that. You want to drop down to maybe 13.8. Um, uh, but these batteries don't need uh, uh, to be on a charger when they are uh, when they are just stored. So uh, yeah, to charge it up, put it, pull it off the charger and then, yeah. Also this uh, Victron charger is uh, supposed to be good for not hurting the batteries. So it's a smart charger. So yeah, hopefully that's true. So let's uh, start charging. I wanna pull up the two apps. So let's, uh, let's do it two times and with the charger and then the, the, the battery app. 
it doesn't get power from the battery so which the other does so i have to put it put it in which i don't like battery is charging with maximum current until absorption voltage is reached at the end of the bulk charge battery is 80 percent charged and ready for use okay so basically uh it it goes uh, bulk, when it bulk charge is uh, it really goes up there with the uh, voltage and uh, try to charge it as much as possible. When it gets up to about eighty percent, it will drop the voltage and not charge as hard. Yep. So you can see uh, output voltage now is fourteen point one seven volts. Current uh, twenty five uh, amps is what it's set to. So it, you can set it to ten or uh, twenty five amps. So I'm going to stop the char charging and then I'm going to uh, pull up the battery app. Now you can see standby mode. Let's put the charger on and see what happens. There you can see uh, it charging and you can see the voltage it's charging with 13.5, 13.4. Yeah, nice. And now you can see the time, 1 hour, 15 minutes. Really cool, really cool. Okay, so I went for the big charger because if I'm on a Friday, I think if find out I, I want to go on a trip I can just put it on and it will charge pretty quickly um, and yeah so that's it charging the car battery is charging let's see it looks like it's still charging so yeah and while this is charging we can start looking at the rear and uh, get going on uh, mounting the, the radio uh, and also start looking where I'm going to mount it. But first, remove the drawers. Okay, getting the drawers out, pretty easy. Just four screws in the front, four screws in the rear, and then it's all out. That said, two screws, two screws, two screws, two screws. This is mounted from underneath. So really quick to, uh, to get out. Okay, so one of my patrons uh, actually showed me how he has his setup and he got his battery inside of here. So uh, I want to put the radio on this side because I know there's a power um, source here somewhere. Um, you can see you pull down the, the the hatch you can see all the wiring and also you can see the fuses for the for the rear also the what's it called uh, trailer power is uh, is a fuse here so uh, I will check the wiring and then see uh, uh, which source I'm going to use there's also a room for adding a a 12 volt here which is I don't have which I think is an extra that you can uh, you can pay for when the car is new another reason for why I want to put the radio back here is because the antenna cable can run through the same hole as the the cables for the the brake light or the rear uh, driving light um, so I can put the cable through the same hole with the same uh, rubber uh, rubber sealing uh, yeah don't remember the name um, so we're going to put the antenna wire up there go out up on top of the on top of the roof then I'm gonna use the uh, the network cable as I said and I'm gonna put that through here up into the roofing and I want the hand controller or microphone uh, uh, just on top in the center uh, so you can reach it and also the the speaker is gonna be next to my ear so I'm gonna hear it loud and clearly that's my plan radio here power and also I'm gonna see if I can somehow get room for the battery inside of here and make this my power station. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is actually to remove the plastic. Phillips screw, don't lose that. Hopefully I 
and get the pass this. section of plastic <laughs> but it's out okay so plastic is out <laughs> you see it yeah not bad about that yeah. so you can see all the massive space which is in uh, in there so if I just put this back just so quickly This is where it used to be, so you can see the massive space here that I can utilize as a power hub. This is a huge space which uh, haven't been used properly. Um, so here I'm thinking somehow, some, some way I'm gonna have a power distribution system here. Okay, so I'm just gonna remove the, the plate here just to see. So as you can see, it's a two by four and two by three maybe which is uh, it's just bolted down into the rails. So you can see I have some tools. Didn't know I had this there. This is probably dried out, yeah. Cutting board, uh, nothing, not much else. See recovery gear, first aid kit, uh, extra first aid kit. Uh, there's another one in the front. Um, so I haven't utilized this space enough. So that's why I wanna, if I can uh, get a bit higher, I can, uh, and use steel instead of the plate, then I can get underneath here um, if I need to. So I can remove the, uh, the inside of the drawers and then I can put my hand into the, into the spacing here. I don't think I will be doing that now, but for now I'm just going to remove this so it's easier to, to work on the, on the battery side. What's the time? <coughs> Remember to pick up my uh, my oldest from practice. I think it's the jack, or no, is it something else? No, it's the, 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 it's the bracket that holds the, uh, the trailer hitch, actually. So the mounting point is underneath here. I think I can get to it. Yep. Yep, that's it. Like you see, the hitch sets into here. So let's, oh, that's another kilo at least removed just from this, this bracket. All the way along here, there's nice mounting points if you wanna build a frame or something. So this is on both sides. And you can see the massive uh, M8 bolts, which goes into there. So yeah, now you can see how it looks. Okay guys, so this, that's it for, uh, for today. I'm gonna continue tomorrow. As I said, it's Monday today and on Friday I'm going out. So hopefully I can get the stuff done until <laughs> till Friday. But I'm probably not gonna get the plastic and everything sorted, but I'm gonna get the radio mounted. So I'm going to have radio. I'm going to get the battery mounted inside the car so I can power the fridge when the car is not running. So that's the two main goals. I uh, also need to put back the drawers after I mounted that, but that's just, it's 10 minutes if I just hurry, so uh, yeah. Now, see you tomorrow. Let's uh, continue then. So you see it changed from bulk to ABS, which I guess is the top 80%. So we can take up the, the app and see uh, how the charge is going. 99% woohoo! Auxiliary battery done. Let's see. Charging green. Main battery also done, so I'm gonna pull that. I don't want it to be charging either way during the night, so yeah. Okay, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. <laughs>